Hi, I'm The Mitten, and you're listening to The Mitten on Knitten. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Episode 6 of The Mitten on Knitten. There's 148 days to Rhinebeck, so let's see what I've been up to. In Loose Threads this week, I needed to join in. I finished up the first skein of yarn on the Rhinebeck scarf, which was very cool. And I needed to join in the the second skein of yarn. So usually what I'll do is I'll just overlap the yarns and I'll knit five stitches on either side of the place where they would would join with the beginning I'll knit five stitches with the beginning tail of the second skein and then five stitches with the end of the tail of the first skein. Um, so it'll be uh, 10 stitches where the yarn is doubled up. But I wanted something smoother because it's a competition scarf. So I looked at the spit splice and the overlapping and the Russians, Russian joins. And basically what the overlapping is, is you make a U on the end of the skein one and a U on the end of skein two and you and you link them together um, so you'll still have that double double thread on either side of the join for the Russian instead of just uh, doubling the thread laying it side by side you actually take a needle and you sew the end of the thread back over the U so it's more of a, a P-shaped but still you got two pieces of yarn there. But the spit splice, that's where you moisten the ends of the both skeins and you rub them together really fast in in your hand so they felt, the, the yarn felt and it holds together. And that gives me gave me the least amount of doubled up fiber. I was able to make it that's what I used, and I was able to make it uh, pretty much match. So um, that's the type of join I'm doing for the scarf, and uh, I think it was uh, worth the time to take a look at the different types of joins to do um, to find one that would be fairly fairly smooth and, and invisible to the eye. So uh, that's what's going on with loose threads. Okay, here's some late-breaking news. Um, which I almost totally forgot, and I can't believe that I almost for- totally forgot, but um, the sheepandwool.com website 2016 workshop registration is open as of Monday, May 16th. Um, there's about five pages of information there that you need to read through. Uh, make sure you have the right browser to do the um, registration without uh, getting hosed over uh, for your selections. But if you're looking to take a workshop at Rhinebeck, registration open today, even though the site says it's 2015. The tw- if you go to workshops, and you'll see the 2016 registration. So, woohoo, one step forward, the registrations are open. On what's fit in the mitten this week? Well, you know, I was wearing everything for my brainless Christmas pink socks. It's still chilly and not chilly here. Um, so I got, uh, I started the week with the pink socks and just went through, went down the list. And then uh, the Jared Flood scarf is in play again as a scarf as well as the pillow for the commute on the train. And I pulled out my homespun um, fingerless mitts, the ones I made with the Icelandic and the Shetland cream and gray and I really need to make myself some more mitts. I don't I don't have a lot. I I seem to keep giving them away and uh you know it's I I'm mitten knitting. Where are where are all of my mittens? Um I I need to get on top of that uh pretty soon because it's kind of embarrassing to sit there and call myself mitten knitting and and other people have all my mittens, and I don't have any of them. It seems, uh, just seems wrong. Anyway, I'll, I'll be taking a look into that. So, what's the mitten knitting? 
I'm knitting the Rhinebeck scarf. I was uh, totally monogamous this week. There was not even a stitch done on any sock. I was 110% just knitting the Rhinebeck scarf. In the morning and on the way into the train, on the train and on the bus, in taxis. I think the only time I wasn't knitting it was when I was driving to the train station because usually you don't want to drive and knit at the same time. Um, unless, of course, you live someplace where you get stuck in a traffic jam for a couple hours, in which case you probably need some some car knitting. Or if you're the passenger and not the driver, then, then you know, go ahead and knit. But I, I was driving, so I kind of focused on that. But other than that, I, other than when I was driving, uh, whenever I was traveling this week, it was it was all about the Rhinebeck scarf. Even during lunch hour, it was all about the Rhinebeck scarf. And uh, my efforts have paid off. I'm getting close to the finish of it, so yay! And that's what I've been knitting. What's on the wheel this week? Well, I still have the hip strings buoy in Beacon, which is the um, yellow roving. It was on the wheel. I finished it up. I got four ounces spun and Andy and ply, uh, Andy and bracelet and plied it back on itself. And when I was spinning it, I was kind of concerned because, you know, I'd heard really good reviews about the roving and everybody said, oh, it was, you know, really soft. And for me, spinning it up, I kind of thought it was a little scratchy and I was disappointed with it and you know then I was like well maybe it's not the roving maybe it's the way I'm spinning it um but then I plied it oh and it softened up so nicely it just it's really beautiful so uh gave it its spa bath today and it's hanging out to dry um so that's what was on the wheel so what's finished this week? Well, just the hip strings buoy uh, in the beacon. Uh, it's the only thing that I got done spinning. Um, it was the only thing I spun. And I uh, didn't finish up the Rhinebeck scarf, and that was the only thing I knit this week. So, um, you know, pretty pretty mono project-wise, but, you know, I, I was happy, happy with just... Uh, going ahead and uh, getting those two things totally taken care of. Um, and the good news, I did find my pink Shetland, um, my pink lemonade Shetland that I had been looking for. Uh, and that's sitting in a bag on the wheel and it's ready to, uh, it's ready to go on. So that'll be, that'll be next up for spinning. But as far as finished it's um it's the beacon uh even though i have one more braid of it that i could spin on i, I want to spin the pink i really want to spin the pink i i was looking for the pink and pulled out the beacon instead but still want to spin the pink so there you have it that's what's finished and now a word not from a sponsor Periwinkle Sheep Yarn, lovingly hand-dyed in small batches. Visit the Periwinkle Sheep online at periwinklesheep.com to see the latest colors Karen has come up with, like watercolors to Zitron. Or stop by and see her in person at the Massachusetts Sheep and Woolcraft Fair, May 28th and 29th in Cummington, Massachusetts. Periwinkle Sheep Yarn, it's to die for. You know, the color dye, not the other one, because that would be bad. In Stash Up Down this week, I did not stash up. Um, the stash down, of course, is the uh, four ounces of buoy in Beacon um, that's finished as fiber and will be moving over into the hand spot, into the yarn bin. But uh, there were no new purchases or anything. I did take the opportunity to go through my stash and uh, take a look at everything that I have and um, see where there are 
what one would call holes in my staff, what I miss in the stash, what I'm missing. I can tell you I'm really not missing a heck of a lot of anything at this point other than sock yarn. Um, so the stash looks pretty good. Uh, I didn't find any infestations even in the fleeces and stuff, so I'm pretty happy and uh, glad that I took the time to uh, toss my stash about and see what's going on with it, but uh, no new additions uh, this week. In where I want to be this this week, but won't, the next event is still the Massachusetts Sheep and Woolcraft Fair on May 28th and 29th. Uh, I believe that was in Cummington, Massachusetts. And uh, yeah, I did spend a good amount of time scoping out all of the different vendors that would be there and looking at the requirements for entering the the fleece sale. I like to look at how much it costs the the shepherds to get their fleeces into the sale because that gives me a good estimate of um, what the prices would be on the fleece because, of course, you're going to pass the cost of entering the fleece on to the consumer. You're not going to swallow that yourself. Um, so it, if it's really high-priced to get into the fleece sale, odds are the fleeces are going to be really expensive, and hopefully they'll be really high-end um, for lower costs. That allows people who have smaller flocks and not as many sales to get some of their fleeces in. So I th I'm hoping that this means they're going to have a lot of fleece for sale, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to uh, look at some pictures of what they actually had, or maybe they'll have like a list of um, what was for sale at the at at their um, wool craft fair. So that's where I want to be, but probably won't be. In Grabby Paws this week, it was all about the sock yarn. It really was. I was reading uh, some of the boards on Ravelry, and one of the girls was talking about sock madness. It's like March Madness, where they have different teams, and then each, uh, I guess, month or each each one of the sock patterns, they uh, narrow it down. Um, you know, people get kicked out, and you know the next the next team moves on. So anyway, so it's all about socks, and everybody was talking about socks, and as you well know, I'm I'm low on sock stash. Not that I'm out. No, that's not happened at all. But I I don't have my my twelve skeins. So I found myself, you know, uh looking at sock patterns and sock yarns. And before you know it, I was over on a website that sells sock yarn. And before you know it, the next thing I know I, I look in the cart and there's there's five skeins of sock yarn in the cart, and I'm sitting there calculating in my head, well, maybe, you know, I need two skeins of the Christmas sock yarn, because then uh, Mr. Mitten and I could have matching socks for Christmas. And I was just like, no! I closed the lid on the computer, I tossed it aside, and I was like, yeah, you, you can't go there, you need to focus on Rhinebeck. And I was very proud of myself. So, a little later in the day, um, this was on Saturday, a little later in the day I went out to get the mail, and uh, in the mail was a Knit Picks uh, catalog, and wouldn't you know what's on the cover? Sock. Sock yarn. Sock patterns. And any and everything to do with socks. I just couldn't believe it. It was like everything in the universe was trying to distract me with buying sock yarns or surfing for patterns and stuff. And and I tell you, I shall not be distracted. I am sticking with my uh, my Rhinebeck goal. I'm going to finish this scarf, and I still have a sweater to knit for crying out loud. Um, so that's going to come first. But grabby paws, oh, it was... The paws were massively grabby, uh, trying to get me to go out and get some sock-related uh, anything this week. In dough this week, um, 
So I on 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 the on the Rhinebeck scarf. I, I, this is made out of hand spun. Um, so you know when you when you ply, you're going to ply an S, or you're going to ply Z, or you know a counterclockwise twist or a clockwise twist. So um, my first skein of yarn. It was totally plied um, counterclockwise. I spun it clockwise and I plied it counterclockwise, and that was lovely. And uh, Mr. Mitten actually helped me cake up the second skein of yarn. And uh, I really, I don't know how this happened, but it got caked backwards. Um, so when I joined it to the first skein of yarn, the first skein of yarn is co- counterclockwise, but now the second skein of yarn is plied clockwise um, because it's it's just backwards. I, I have no idea how this happened. I really don't. It's the most bizarre thing that I've ever seen. But there you have it. That's my dough. And since I used a spit splice to join them together, that's the way it's stain. And uh, we'll just see if anybody actually notices uh, when it comes to judging because those two pieces of yarn are, um, they're not coming apart. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's, I don't know how that happened. It's just really weird. And it, even though I tinked back the 162 rows to undo that knit to undo that purl stitch and change it back into a knit stitch um this is one mistake i it was just by the time i realized what was going on there was there's just nothing you could do about it um so there you have it backwards yarn uh in spinning I also had a dough, and this was a new one for me. I was uh, I was chatting with a friend, you know, spinning and ply. I was plying the yarn and just chatting and chatting away. And the next thing you know, I looked down at it and realized that uh, I wasn't putting any twist into the ply. So I was just, you know, feeding two pieces of yarn onto the bobbin. So I had my Andean bracelet that I was flying from so then I had to make like an interim Andean bracelet to pull it back off of the bobbin um because there was no twist in it so when you're when you're plying I guess you do have to pay a little bit of attention um (laughs) and make sure you're actually twisting the yarn and that's my dough this week I think they're both pretty good and classic ones let's try not to repeat them in the future and where I'll be this week, uh, work and home, home and work. Um, but this is also a, a town board meeting week. Um, so I have lots of meetings at night, so I have no idea how much I'll get accomplished. Um, hopefully I'll get a, enough done to keep moving forward. Um, but it's going to be a busy week. And uh, I'm actually kind of looking forward to it because it's really not supposed to be rainy and miserable. It's supposed to be warmer and nicer and sunnier. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the, the positive thoughts of weather um, to get me through the week because I'm not going to have a lot of time uh, to spin and knit. I do have to get to all my reading and research done for, for the town, so... That's that. At least uh, work is supposed to be quiet after midweek. Um, graduation is over and all the students leave and the teachers leave, so uh, campus quiets down. So there you have it. Um, work and home, home and work, and uh, some stuff for the town. That's where I'll be this week. Our question this week is from Kath. Her family's concerned because she's cast on yet another work in progress, and they don't think that she's spending enough time taking care of her household duties. Um, 
as an extreme commuter and a person with a very busy schedule, I, I want to say first family does come first. So it's good that you are listening to their concerns and, and working to do something to resolve the situation before it gets out of hand. Um, but at the same time, at, no matter how many projects you have on the needles, you could have 15 different projects on the needles, you're still only knitting one stitch at a time. So essentially, you really haven't increased the amount of knitting that you're doing because you're just knitting one stitch at a time. Um, as far as getting the household chores taken care of, I've responded to you on the Ravelry board and uh, given you some tips and tricks that I use. Um, for example, making one-pot dinners, um, which save on dishes. And uh, I've put that on the Rav board for you. So I hope this is helpful to you. Um, I wouldn't worry uh, too, too much if you have time to write uh, a letter to us to to ask if it is a problem, then you obviously um, ha have more than enough time to cast on yet another work in progress, uh, especially since it's for your dear husband. So I hope this answers your question, and thanks for writing in. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.